Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. I'm Rowan Mejia, here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course, author interviews. Episode number 259 of the show, got six new reviews for you folks, four for myself and two from our correspondent, Ian Mitchell. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, reviews for Underworld Scorching Sun, uh, the latest in that particular series. Also, Age of the Ancients, a new series from Aaron Oster. Also, um, World Tree Online, the Order of the Epic Grinders, the fourth dive. I don't know if it's not the fourth book in the series. Also, we're going to be reviewing Salvos, volume number one, Curious Beginnings in Monster Evolution Lit RPG Game Lit Story. And then, of course, in Ayn's uh, Picks of the Week, we're going to be uh, reading his reviews for Apocalypse Generic System and Death's Favorite Warlock. So, six reviews here before we get into any of that. Gonna of course go into the lit RPG news. And in lit RPG news, we have a couple of stories. It's kind of a Tao Wong themed <laughs> news section. Uh, Tao Wong, author of the System Apocalypse series, um, several other series, including a healer skip. Um, he's actually expanding the places you can find his stories in several instances. Um, the first place that's new is going to be from Tapas, uh, which is a web comic, an online web comic, um, web comic ring, uh, app and site. Um, there's lots of web comics on there. They even have an app, of course, you can read on your phone. Um, and Tao Wong has not only produced a web comic for his uh, Healer's Gift series, but it's there on top of us. So you can read, I think, the first uh, six or seven chapters for free. Then you had to pay, kind of a paywall to get through them. Um, but it's a new way for you to, you know, consume great stories, especially an enjoyable story like A Healer's Gift, which I personally enjoyed. Um, I enjoy the artwork that I've seen so far. So definitely go check it out if you have an interest in reading web comics. Uh, link in the show notes. Um, and other Tao Wong news uh, the System Apocalypse has already had um, several um, comics that have been produced uh, by Tao Wong. And um, he is now running a Kickstarter campaign to get a physical copy version of them to to interest parties like backer, supporters, putting them up on Amazon, whatever the case is. Um, but it is expensive, apparently. Uh, who would have guessed? Uh, the making pr- pr- physical copies was more expensive than ebook copies. Um, but he is doing a Kickstarter campaign to reward uh, backers a bit to make uh, we'll help with the cost for that particular endeavor. Um, I think there are like six or seven or more entries in the, to this comic book series based upon the System Apocalypse universe. I believe it's a different main character. I can't remember if it's the same main character or not. Um, but um, some of the words for backers include digital comics. Physical prints of the comp- of the comic book, audiobooks, and even a, a conversation with Tao Wong himself, if you put forth enough um, back- backing for the project. Um, we have a link to the Kickstarter campaign, but you can also just do a search for the System Apocalypse uh, Lit RPG comic if you want to go check it out on Kickstarter. So there we go, some nice news from the Lit RPG verse. Um, on to stuff that is out now. This is stuff that has come out recently. Haven't a chance to read it, but I'm letting you know it's out in case it's something you want to read here. That includes the third book in the Factory of God series. Uh, the second book in the, um, I forgot the actual name of it. I think in the title it says the duology series, but the first is, um, Adventures of a Scribe, which is a very, um, good story. I actually really enjoyed it, but it's been a while since the author has put anything out. And this is the second book in the series called Challenges of a Scribe. Um, also out is Rule of Cool by Matthew Sieg. Um, this is, I think, being produced through Atheon. Um, it also has a companion audiobook that is out right now. It's the same story. Audiobook form is, is out currently narrated by Felicia Day. So if you are interested in the story, the audiobook is doing a lot better than the ebook right now. And I think that's mostly due to her promotion of it through her uh, YouTube page, her YouTube channel, media sites that she's working with. So a lot more people are buying the audiobook version of this than the ebook version. Um, but definitely go check it out if you're interested. Also out now is Dungeon Duel, the fifth book in the Rogue Dungeon series. The Beta Testers book number five is out as well, as is the sixth book in the Discardium series. I'm almost finished with it. I haven't quite finished it, unfortunately, as of this recording, so I don't have a review for you. Um, it's called Path of the Spirit. 
Also out is the third book in the Bonant series. Uh, and a new series from Dan Henniger, who's most probably well known for his um, Roman-based um, Little Beauty series, which is finished. Um, this one is a dungeon core novel called Cat Core. So here we go. Um, also out is the Library of the Demonium, the Abduction Cycles book two in that series, if you're familiar with it. The second book came out. Um, also out is the Real-Time Star Commander 2, Grand Assault, a stat strategy game lit novel this isn't little bg necessarily but it is definitely um rts game lit um based and i really enjoyed the first book so i'm like second book is out i'm planning to read it it is enjoyable um and i like always like i always tend to appreciate when an author tries to pull in something new and a real-time strategy like space combat stuff is is, is honestly kind of challenging right because it is a lot of times numbers technical stuff and build times and strategy stuff like i always appreciate uh that an author can do it well and write it in a team story um also out a new book from harman cooper cowboy necromancer um and the second book in the saga online series called hellbound so all kinds of new stuff 40 read as of this moment that's good and interesting um also out are some new audiobooks including the third book in the world of chain series called the emissary bard um the nightmare game system which is a lit rpg horror series from our very own raymond johnson um narrated by tristan kane and lee Srenny, and steve campbell so all kinds of interesting voices and this is seriously horror um and i can only imagine <laughs> the uh, I, I read the beginning of it it wasn't for me. Not that it's bad delivery. And I'm like, I'm not really that big of a horror fan. And I'm like, oh, that that, that is that is should not be done to somebody. <laughs> is is my reaction. I read the beginning portion of it, so I'm like, no, nah, you know, I'm not gonna finish this. So, but um, Raymond Johnson put a lot of heart and effort into it. He's a huge horror fan. He's a big Little Bitty fan. He does our Little Bitty audiobook podcast as the host there. Um, so if you want to support the podcast, definitely go check this out. Again, it, it is horror. Uh, not light horror, um, and the author does try to combine RPG mechanics in there. So, if those two things work for you, this this might be up your street. Um, also out, of course, hard to mention this rule of cool the audiobook. Also out is the Dragon Heart Book Number Eight for fans of that series. The second book in the Vampire Sorcerer series is also out as an audiobook. Also, Ether Revivals Book Two is out as an audiobook, written by the amazing Daniel Schienhofen and performed by Andrew Parsnell. Um, Adventures of the Scribe, the second book we mentioned already. The first book is out as an RP, uh, sorry, audiobook as of today. Uh, so for fans of the Delver's LLC universe, the Golden Handcuffs, um, <laughs> entry into that series. I can't remember exactly which book it is in the series, um, but it's more the, it, well, the kids are recent. Um, it is out as an audiobook though. Uh, also the short story, Daily Jobs, Coffee, and an Alfie Big Adventure which is a short story in the System Apocalypse series written by Tan Wong. Um, I read it. I thought it was a cute story. Not that big on the RPG progression in the story. There's not a lot that happens there. But it is a very cute story set in that universe. So if you're into short stories, um, I would recommend that. Um, Hellbound Saga Online 2 is also out as an audiobook as well as an ebook. The Dungeon Slayer book number one is out as an audiobook. Um, Discardian book number five, as is Card Mage, Song of Society by the... Um, um, spicy Union Red. Um, Dungeon Guild, book number three, uh, is out as an audiobook. Uh, Underdog, book number four, is also out as is The Alchemist, book number four. All great stories for you to enjoy, um, out as audiobooks. Okay, on to upcoming Little B. This is just where I read up a bunch of stuff that's coming out in the near future, up until I think at this point, uh, May. Um, so February 23rd, the third book in a Snake's Life series is out February 24th. The third book in the Dungeon Fairy series by Jonathan Brooks is out. Uh, February 25th will be The Good Guys, book number 10. February 26th will be Player Reaches the Top, book number 5. Uh, February 27th, uh, a new series from Wolf Lock, Dungeon of the Old Gods. February 28th, the third book in the Pangeal Online series. March the 2nd, a new series uh, called Beginner's Quest, Towers and Rifts, book number 1. March 5th, a third book in the Shamanic, in the Legacy System series called Shamanic Rites. Um, March the 5th is a Dungeon Core Apocalypse. March the 9th, He Who Finds With Monsters. Um, March the 9th, it'll be the Battle for the North, Rogue Merchant, book number 4. Um, March the 16th, Overdraft, book number 3, which is the Mech 
um, MMO based kind of story, which I found entertaining in book number one. Um, March 19th would be Lucky Slots. March the 19th, the seventh book in the Reality Bender series. So I'm looking forward to that one. On uh, March 31st, it'll be Sovereign's Choice, God Games Book Volume Number 5. March 31st, Divine Apostasy Book Number 4. March, sorry, April the 2nd, it'll be Nullifier Book Number 2. April the 2nd as well, it'll be Dungeon Crawler Carl, Book Number 3 in that series. April the 5th, it'll be Null Form Book Number 1. April the 12th, In the System Book Number 2, which is a Russian translation story. Um, April the 12th, from Ross Per, Vulpers Book Number 1, Alpha Rome. April the 15th, Killing Them Lawfully, The Good Guys Book Number 11. So, not the long to wait between Book Number 10 and 11 for The Good Guy series. On April the 20th, it'll be Rogue Merchant Book Number 5. April 22nd, uh, Ash, The Legends of the Nameless World. April the 30th, the third book in the Guild Core series. On May the 4th, the Heavenly Throne, book number five. May the 4th as well, it'll be Jeff, the Game Master, book number one, Manufacturing Magic. May the 6th, Div- Defined Divinity, book number two. May the 10th, the Guns of Kaldora, Factory of the Gods, book number four. May the 10th, it'll be Project Stellar, book number four. On May the 11th, Beta Testers, book number six. May the 14th, the Range, book number two. I never got around to reading book number one. I don't think it did particularly well in sales. Um, But it's kind of a sci-fi story, so I I always regret not reading book number one, unfortunately. Um, May the 18th, Discardian, book number seven, The Demon, Demonic Games. On May the 20th, an NPC's Path, book number four. May 31st, the Dungeons Slayers, book number three. So all kinds of stuff coming up in the near future, all the way up to May. If you have anything to add on the list, if you're an author publishing a little beauty story, if you plan to, or you just saw something that I haven't, um, because Amazon sometimes is very easy in their search results, let me know. You can feel free to shoot us an email at littlebridgepodcast um, with, at feedback at gateboyspodcast.com or uh, th- what is it, littlebridgepodcast at gmail.com. Either one address will get you some stuff or you can send us a message through Facebook at the Little Bridge Podcast uh, Facebook group though. So there you go. Um, on to new releases and reviews. Okay. First review of the week is Underworld Scorching Sun, a lit RPG series written by Apollo Thorne. Um, I can't remember if it's the sixth or seventh book in this series, but it's it's getting on there. Um, it is 358 pages, $5.99. It's available on Kindle Unlimited, and here's the author's description. Passing through the vampiric gate, Elorian enters the true heart of the Underworld for the first time. The sooner he completes his mission, the sooner he and the girls can return home. The task is impossible at his current level, so he follows the lich down the only viable path, a path laden with bodies and blood. Okay, um, this is, well, a good chunk of the story is kind of the slice of life push into the vampire world to become a true blood, uh, by competing in a turn of time. I I think those are probably the biggest, um, story points to be aware of. Like, this is a smaller story than it's been in the past. It really is just the main character, um, his lich kind of guy and his exploration and power growth, um, including like, honestly, the, a, a quest that had been given to the main character probably like four books ago. So it was nice to see that there was actually some progress there. Um, there's lots of good fighting. There's lots of good world building here because the main character is exploring, um, this entirely new culture of, of vampire societies, vampire clans who have, um, different views about how humans are used as food, um, their own culture, societies, power bases, power types. Um, so it's interesting to see the world of them that, that went into creating these, these social structures and these competing clans, um, and their, their politics in there. Um, so I was really impressed with it, the, the depth that the main like author put into thinking about those things and not making them boring. There's always tension. There's interesting, you know, conflict between these, these different clans. Um, and I liked that. Um, I wasn't surprised with the outcome of the story because the main character kind of has to complete this quest to continue on with the series. So his, 
his, the results of it were, were for me, um, in every question. Um, but they didn't mean I didn't like the journey. It did however feel a little more slow side because like I, I was following him through this world and these combat and this, this tournament fighting, um, with in my, in my mind, always knowing he was going to have a particular outcome, which I won't spoil. Um, but it made the journey a little less tense because again, I already kind of had figured out the outcome. Otherwise the story just kind of ends. Um, but that didn't make the journey unentertaining. It just meant that there wasn't, uh, that surprise. There are surprises in the story and there are definitely other great things in there. Like I said, the action world building is really good, but that outcome was never really in doubt for me. Um, there are, however, some uh, like really great moments. Um, the sacrifice of the main character to humanity to some degree to, to, Feel, um, to kind of infiltrate this vampire society. I thought that was really nicely done. It showed some interesting um, character growth, which isn't, it wasn't pleasant for some readers. Reading some of the reviews, some reviews were like, this guy's a terrible human being. And they're like, he, he, he was, he's terrible to the vampires. And that's another <laughs> side of that spectrum for me. I was like, oh no, this kind of makes sense. And that his goal is to, to help his people survive. And he's he's sacrificing a part of himself in blending in with this, um, I don't want to say a monstrous society, what he believes to be a monstrous society. And then finding um, like this, this exploration of that even among a, a group of creatures who, you know, devour humans and their blood for, for sustenance, there are gradations of good and evil. Um, and that there are no absolutes. And I liked that exploration of, of that story. To, and I, I really did uh, appreciate a lot. Um, so, and, and there's just like nice little moments here, like his, his social temptation uh, to stay with a particular clan. Um, um, there's mass murder that he has to respond to on an emotional and growth level. Um, and they're just like some nice little emotional moments that I thought were great. These, there are a lot of like really great moments on the whole. The story is good. And that's mostly from my perspective, just because it, it's hard to say it's great. It was just kind of shy of great for me, I should say, because I kind of knew what was happening. I knew the outcome um, because I haven't followed it this long. Like he has to have this outcome. Otherwise, the story doesn't continue on um and so there was there's was like oh i i kind of know what's happening um but the the structure along the way is just still entertaining i like a lot of great moments i was like that's a really good storytelling you know event and and like that's a great world building inspiration and these are some really good fights uh, i thought there were um but because i knew what's happening I, I felt like the story is like oh a little predictable in that i knew the I, I figured out the outcome um but if you're a reader who who hasn't done that, um, you probably think it's going to be great. Cause like I said, there's some really good real being storytelling that, that happens in here. Some great moments for me. So for me, it's just a little bit shy of grade. It's going to get a 7.8 out of 10, which is like, again, just a couple sub points from great. It's, it's nearly great. Not quite there for me, unfortunately, but it's in really, really good. Um, that's uh, underworld scorching sun, a lit RPG series with the score of eight to seven point eight out of 10. Definitely a high recommend. Okay, the next up is going to be Age of Ancients, a game lit liberty series, Shattered Kingdom book number one, written by Aaron Oster. It is 334 pages, $3.99. It's available on Kindle Unlimited. Here is the author's description. Dabu's life has been far from easy. Born with a crippling lung illness, he has never been as strong as his father or brother, both of whom have disappeared after attempting the challenge of the trials of the ancients. In the wake of the tyrant king's war, his village has come under the control of the of the Purus, a vicious gang of magically enhanced cutthroats and murderers. The trials offer the promised power to any who can clear them, but Dabu has been forbidden from entering. After a violent encounter releases his family in danger, Dabu faces a difficult decision. Either leave the village to challenge the trials or stay and risk starvation. The trials are, mon are monstrously difficult, filled with dangerous beasts, deadly obstacles, and tribes of challengers who control the areas within. But if he can make it out alive, Dabu will gain the power he needs to finally drive the Purus from his home. Um, so there you go. Okay, um... I think this had like a really nice opening for a little bit of series. Um, it follows a familiar pattern of a loose routine who gets stuck, who gets a little luck rather. Um, 
but through much sacrifice and motivation, goes in a kind of dungeon crawl to become powerful enough to go up against his tormentors and troublemakers. So like, that premise is familiar, um, but I thought it was really nice and, and that the author establishes a really good reason for the main character to take the risk of, of jumping in this dungeon and a good power progression of him um, growing with um, with enough challenges to make it feel like he he worked for it. Um, so good stuff there. On the RPG side of stuff, um, there is consistency here uh, with a decent mis- mix of interesting powers. The, the, the RPG mechanics are a little bit looser um, just to make the power progression um, <laughs> feel valid. Um, there are definitely time jumps in the story that were annoying for me personally because they push the main character to new power levels without me actually seeing him do it. It's like, oh, and a week later of training, I'm this powerful. And I'm like, okay, I, I guess. So on, the, on that side of things, like I was a little disappointed, but overall the power structure and the powers he has and uses are, are, are done intelligently. So that's still a plot on the overall. Very p- pleased with that. Um, I like that there's a mix of magic and chi. So I also like that um, the eventual um, progression of that system. Well, I'm, I'm trying to spoil things. Um, there's good crunch here. Lots of notifications, lots of power descriptions. Um, lots of, you know, that kind of stuff without being too much to bog down in the story. So it's a really good balance there. Um, the things I, I didn't care for that kind of drew down my enjoyment. Um, there is a, a villain set up in the beginning of the story, which I which just talked about in the novel description. And that, that, that enemy, that, um, conflict is, is not resolved by the main character. So I was like, it, there's a setup for the main character here. And then by the end of the story, I'm like, it's resolved, but it's not by the main character. So all that tension that was built up at the beginning um, felt flat to me. Um, I didn't, I didn't ultimately mind how it was resolved. I, I was on a storytelling, but like, oh, disappointed, oh, that it wasn't the main character that made that progression because it's made such a big deal about this is literally the reason he's going into the dungeon. This is literally the reason he's going through all this oppression and power and struggle. And in the end, when he comes out, that doesn't exist anymore. Like there's a different um, um, antagonist that is, is is presented to the main character that he eventually resolves things with. Well, again, I'm trying to swell things. Um, and but it wasn't that original one that talked about in 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 the novel description. So I was like, oh, that's that's a letdown for me. Um, also, the end was entirely predictable. Um, but overall, the story had a good action still. It had good world building and again a nice setup for future storylines. So on the whole, entertaining. Um, gets a score seven point four to ten. Age of the Ancients, a game lit liberty series, Shattered Kingdoms, book number one, with a score seven point four out of ten. And next up we have World Tree Online, the Order of the Epic Grinders, fourth die, which I think it's the fifth book in the series. Don't quote me. Uh, written by M. A. Carlson. It is 627 pages. It is $4.99. It's available on Kindle Unlimited. And here is the author's description. It never gets any easier, or at least not in Bye Bye Jacko's world. After striking a bargain with Epic, the stakes have never been higher. If Bye Bye wins, Epic promised to put the defeated players back to right in the real world. If Epic wins, things will get so much worse. And Epic really wants to win this one. To win, the rogue AI will strike at the first citizens Bye Bye ever helped. It's the undead apocalypse, and Hurley Grid is right in the path to destruction. Failure this time could have more consequences than even Bye Bye can imagine. Okay, um, I did receive Ben's copy of this. Um, my British copy when it became available. Um, this is this is a, an interesting mix in the story. It's not my favorite in the series. I liked some aspects of it. It's kind of a slice of a story for a lot of it. Um, um, and I really enjoyed returning to this world and seeing the banter of the characters I really like. Um, and like they, they exist and it's more than happy to follow them on their adventures. Um, there is new aspects that I enjoyed on the RPG side of things, including uh, town building, guild building. Um, the main character gets a new class that I thought was pretty cool. I'm not going to say what it is, uh, but I'm like, oh, I, I played that class in 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 D and D, it's a it's a it's a it's a custom build. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Um, however, there's some aspects like, oh, not bad, but I'm like, oh, not the best either. Um, the plot was a little weak for me, 
Um, it again leads more towards general slice of life adventuring with the exception of like the end, which really has like this, um, I think it's a cool twist. I was, I, I, I wish I would have seen that developed more specifically through the entire story instead of feeling, I don't want to say like it's tacked on to the end, but it feels like, oh, this is all this stuff happens. And uh, for, for most of the story, the, the big series plot was honestly not in my mind. It was, it's not something that's, that's for me, um, set up in the story as like this, this great impetus for the main character to do all the things he's doing in, in, in saving. It's, 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 it, it's not like it doesn't exist. It, there are occasional matters saying, oh yeah, by the way, there's this plot thing with an AI and et cetera. Um, but it, it, for, for a lot of the story, it's really just feels like general slice of life adventuring. There's the undead coming towards the town and that's, that's a whole like series of adventures um, with, with new characters popping in for the group. There's, there's plenty of good RPG progression for each of the characters' classes and how they're doing, and there's there's a new edition of RPG Mechanics for, for the guild that they're developing, and, and that system, which is really well detailed, probably a little too much, um, um, but the, the plot itself, I'm like, oh, yeah, but I had to kind of remind myself, like, oh, wait, that's right, there is this plot, and it, it for me, it wasn't well developed in for a lot of the story. It, 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 at the end, it's like, oh, that's right, it, it is a cool ending, it's a cool twist, and I think people who, who enjoy the story are just gonna like the twist at the end, um, but for me on the whole is a little on the weak side. Um, overall though, it is a good story. I had a good time with it. Um, if you're a fan of the series, I think you'll still enjoy it. The plot of Emily left a little something to be desired, but again, there's a lot of other good aspects that were still enjoyable. Um, again, I, and I always enjoy the series and I always enjoy these characters and coming back and hanging out with them was is always kind of fun. Uh, for me though, it again, it's not the strongest entry in the series, but still a good read. Gets a score of 7.2 out of 10. Royal Tree Online, The Order of the Epic Grinders, which sounds a little naughty, but it isn't. Um, fourth Dive with the score of, again, 7.2 out of 10. And next up, we have Salvos, Volume 1, Curious Beginnings in Monster Evolution, Little Bit of Gimlet Story, written by V.A. Lewis. It is 373 pages, $3.99. It is not available on Kindle and Luden. That's because it's also online um, if you want to search for it. Um, here's the author's description. The netherworld is a hellish landscape inhabited only by demons, creatures born from the dark abyss. It is also the only world Salvos knows. Joining the ranks of newborn demons, Salvos is thrown into the violent anarchy ruled landscape of that world. To survive, she will have to learn, she will have to adapt, and she will have to evolve. She will gain experience to reach new levels of power. Her curiosity aids her, but her pride could be her fall. It is the nature of the netherworld to avoid or conquer any threats faced. After all, the law of evolution is survival of the fittest, and Salvos is a survivor. And perhaps eventually, she will leave this world behind for a better place. But is that what Salvos even wants? Okay, um, this is a little bit of serial uh, that first appears on the Royal Road um, with a monster main character um, who is an evolving demon that eventually comes to the mortal plane against her will. She has to fight, learn about quirky humans, and evolve her fire powers while she tries to find a way back to the nether realm. Um, there's lots of fighting with the first quarter or so of the story, a straight up monster evolution story set in the demon realm. Um, the RPD stuff is fairly consistent. Uh, there's a good, interesting evolution of the main character's fire based powers and her of herself. I think she goes through a couple of evolutions, most of which happen in the beginning quarter. Um, and there's actually a pretty decent uh, motivation for her to do leveling once she's on the mortal plane. The camaraderie between the main character and the group she eventually develops is reasonable and it's laced with natural seeming biases. They gave a little bit of depth to the world building and the characters. Um, overall, it's an entertaining story with the good RPG stuff, good action, and pacing that kept me turning pages and looking forward to reading what happened next. It's nearly great. I'd say the thing that stopped me from, from giving it a greater score is that it, um, it kind of leaves behind the monster evolution portion of the story. After a certain point, for most of the story, I would say. Uh, the beginning portion, um, like the first quarter or so, you get several monster evolutions, but af after she comes to the main, um, the main world, it's just levels and advancements of power. So I would have liked to have seen at least one more or two more evolutions for her as, 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 as a monster evolution story, especially since it's in the title. Um, but because it didn't happen, I, I felt that her progression was, was a little muted. 
um, compared to what it, it could have been as, as a full-fledged monster evolution story. But again, that's just opinion. Would you, but it does drop it down a little bit for me. Still, gets a good review score, um, 7.8 out of 10. That's, that's again, nearly great. Uh, that's Salvos Volume 1, Curious Beginnings, a monster evolution story with the score of 7.8 out of 10. Okay, next up we have Iron Picks of the Week. Um, contributor Ryan Mitchell, a longtime Lit RPG community member who reads and reviews just as much as me, has nice enough to agree to join the Liberty Podcast family as, as a new reviewer. And he sent us some stuff. And he has a couple of reviews for us this week, including Macro, uh, sorry, Macronomicon Apocalypse Generic System. I actually reviewed this one and read it every night. I thought it was great. Um, and Ian says, Fun for the win. Uh, in case anyone is curious about my ratings, I love fun books, epic over the top stuff, epic fails, the party running like heck after hearing a click, followed shortly by oops, dumb jokes, plucky heroes that get curb on that get back up for more. This one drew in all sorts of stuff I like. The hero obviously read Dresden Files, some anime references, a system apocalypse setup, gamifying things, and lots of explosions and gore. Great fun. I had a blast. So um, I agree with him. Great story. He gives it a score of 9.4 out of 10. So good review score for mine. Um, he also gives us a review for Death's Favorite Warlock by Charles Dean. And he says, murder and milkshakes. This isn't a colorful world. Funny in places, disturbing in others. A strange mashup where the main character has RPG progression and a world of beast kin cultivators. There's a lot of mysteries in play. And Charles Dean gives out glimpses here and there of them. His companion... In his head, Ophelia has been asking him to kill people since he was a young child. There were some great battles, and the world does have the cultivation elements and feeling. I enjoyed the quick read that wasn't too heavy or too light. I look forward to the next one. I hope it has more color and some explosions, definitely some gore, and reminds me of that Shadow and Shadow the Hedgehog game I wouldn't let my kids play in Catharsis, one of my favorite Led G books. He gives it a score of 8.5 out of 10. I thought it was a really good story as well. Um, but um, Ian Mitchell says it's a score of 8.5 out of 10 for Death's Favorite Warlock. So there we go. And that's it for Iron's Picks of the Week. Okay, that is the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for listening, for watching. Remember, you can find us on a bunch of places. If you want to follow us and see all of our past reviews or the past episodes of the podcast, um, you can find our podcast anywhere you want to, YouTube, Patreon, iTunes, Google Play. Um, you can just look at our website, literaturepodcast.com for all the many, many hundreds of episodes that we've done of the show. Um, we're also on Audible, Spotify. So lots of places for you to check us out. Um, if you want to help support the podcast and make sure we stay free and ad-free, you can find out all the ways to support us at litrpgpodcast.com slash support. Uh, but until we can hang out again, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for, for listening to me talk about a genre I love and reading these stories that I enjoy. And until we can hang out, remember to go read some lit RPG.